can I ask you to remain standing as I introduce our guest preacher. He's come a very long way to speak to you this morning, all the way from Khartoum. His Grace Ezekiel, Archbishop of Sudan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Thank you, Ben. Thank you all. I would like to begin with a short joke. Uh, a vicar was leading a service, a communion service, and as he went through the service, the Lord be with you and also with you. And uh, he continued. He said, there is something wrong with this microphone. The response came, and also with you. Uh, I come from Sudan, as we hear, and I know you will have uh, difficulty with uh, understanding my accent uh, because English is my third language. Uh, my first language is Nuba, uh, which is a local language in Sudan, and the second language is Arabic because this is the official language of my country. And so I struggle with the English language. So please, if you don't understand, ask him. <laughs> I'm very pleased and I want to thank you for your warm welcome. I have been here uh, now over a week uh, upon the invitation of uh, your bishop, Bishop Nick, to join other bishops from other parts of the world to have a retreat at Passover Hall and to learn together from one another and to see what the Lord is doing uh, in the churches around the world. And so during this week, I have been enjoying my time uh, visiting places and meeting people. I uh, have been a little bit cold, <laughs> but because of your warm welcome, I feel really at home and I feel warm. So I want to thank you and I want to thank uh, my younger brother, Ben, for, uh, and to you all for asking me to come and share with you this morning uh, with the word of God. I would like to also to take this opportunity to thank you Last year, you left him come to Sudan. It was very hot for him, but he managed. And uh, here we are. So thank you for letting him come, particularly his wife and yeah, a small child who he left behind. Uh, they are also want to take this opportunity to bring uh, greetings from my people, from my bishops, clergy, and Christians, particularly in the Diocese of Khartoum, where I am the Diocesan Bishop, as well as uh, uh, Archbishop of uh, Sudan. There are five dioceses in the new province. Of course, you know that Sudan and South Sudan was one country five, till five years ago when it got split, and uh, South Sudan got its independence because it, Sudan has been in war for over 50 years. Uh, he was born in war, and the country is still in war. I'm now 60 years old. Who knows, maybe I will die, and the war is still on. Uh, and so uh, now there are two countries, South Sudan, and Sudan. So I come uh, from this part, the, the remaining <coughs> Sudan. And so there are five dioceses. Soon also there are going, it's going to be, I mean, the church is going to be split into two because it's still one, it's still one province, South Sudan and Sudan. But in July, God willing, Archbishop Justin will come out and uh, other primates of the Anglican Communion to inaugurate this new province 
because it is difficult to run one province in two countries because the policies and the government are different, particularly the government in the north uh, is not happy to uh, be associated uh, with the dealings in South Sudan. That is the reason why uh, July there is going to be inauguration of this new province. Uh, there are about, I'm saying about because you don't know exactly, but there's about one million Anglicans in the whole of, of Sudan. Not South Sudan, but just the remaining, the remaining Sudan, but scattered all over. Part of the country we cannot meet because it's being controlled by what is called SPLA North, the people who are fighting the government. So part of the country have no access, and people there are in difficult uh, situation. There are 245 priests in this new province, uh, 570 members of the Mother's Union. I saw some of you are very active in Mother's Union. Mother's Union in Sudan is very, very active indeed. And every church, I suppose like any, any church you find, the majority of people in the pews are women and we want to congratulate the women for this uh, great work that they do uh, in the church. Uh, as I said, people are uh, facing difficulty and challenges, but we know that God is there. God is with them. He's protecting them. And I suppose this is what we are going to share this morning in these few moments uh, from the readings that we have just read. So let us pray. Yes, Father God, we want to give you thanks and praise. We ask your presence and guidance as we hear you. I pray, Father, that you'll hide myself, reveal yourself and hide me behind your cross. Speak to us and speak to each and everyone needs this morning. Thank you because you are our God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We read the Old Testament reading and New Testament reading. Uh, New Testament, the gospel reading is very long reading, but it is worth to read the whole story about the resurrection of Lazarus. And that was a great miracle. The Old Testament is about the dry bones from Prophet Ezekiel, not Archbishop Ezekiel. <laughs> uh, name, of course, somebody has already told me that God strengthens. And uh, this is a, a, a well-known story, both texts. And so it is difficult for somebody to, to, to preach from. But I have a few thoughts that I would like to share with you. The text, the Old Testament text, I very much identify with it because the situation that I come from speaks exactly uh, like that situation in the Old Testament, where the people of Israel were taken to exile, and they were living under a foreign rule with no freedom, with pressure. And they were just like dry bones, without breath, without skin, they lived in a very difficult situation. And this is where Prophet Ezekiel was called to give hope to these people, to strengthen them, that they were not alone, that somebody cares for them. And so he was told to prophesy, he was shown this valley full of bones, 
not only bones, but dry bones with nothing, scattered. When he asked a question, do you think these bones will live again? He answered wisely, it is only you who can answer this question. And so he was told to prophesy. He was given words to say. He said them. And there, bones began to come together. Bones began to be dressed with new skin. Breath was given to them. So then he told him that these people of Israel are like this. I want you to tell them that new restoration, new flesh will come into them. Breath will come to them. And when I look and I see my own situation, it is just like that. Many Sudanese are scattered all over the world. There are many in this country. There are many in East Africa, particularly in Uganda, Kenya, South Sudan, Egypt, Libya, around the world because of the pressure, because there are few people who are making life very difficult for others to live. As a result, people are running away. People are running away because they cannot stay in that situation. It's their hope. And I suppose there are many other countries like that. You go to the Middle East, the situation is the same. Even in your own country, the incident that happened in the Westminster a few weeks ago, in your home, there are fears, there are challenges. Where is God? Is there hope? Ezekiel was told that yes, there is hope. There is new life. There is somebody who cares. God does. And of course, you see the state of Israel today is uh, 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 political, theological difficulty, challenge. But in all these challenges, and these difficulties, these questions that we cannot respond to, that we cannot answer, God knows. He is the one who knows the answer. The gospel reading, Lazarus, was loved by his sisters. He died. And Mary and Martha remembered Jesus. I wish Jesus were here. Our brother would not have died. But he died. Four, year, four, 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 four uh, days in the grave, he comes. And they told him, they are crying, crying because their brother have gone. And so he tells them, assured them, your brother will live again. Yes, we know that. But in the last day, When he saw people crying and weeping, he wept. The shortest verse in the Bible, he weeps. Jesus weeps. He weeps because he is concerned with the human being. He is concerned with the people. He loves them. And that is the reason why he came. Died on the cross so that all may have life. So he goes out. He calls Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come out. Here he comes. Tight hands and feet, his face, untie him. He was untied. He was made loose. Of course, this is a miracle. 
Very difficult one. I know if somebody comes to live here, I think I will be the first person to run away. <laughs> because it's, 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 it's unusual. Can't accept something like this. Even though we, well, we love this brother of ours, but he's dead. How could he come back to life? I would like to cast suggest to us each one of us, we don't know what situation we are in, how our relations with our God, how is our relations with, with, with one another. I think today, as we are in this uh, beginning of the Passion uh, Week, where next Sunday will be uh, a time where Jesus enters into Jerusalem, knowing that he was going to be killed, but he accepted the challenge to go. We want to see that and see ourselves. Where are we? Jesus comes to deliver us. Jesus comes to help us on this difficult journey in order to be, live a holy life to be close to him so that at the end of the day we will be with him where he is. We want to see ourselves where are we? Are we close to God or are we far away and therefore we are cold, we are dry, we have no life, we have no flesh, we are dead. God is concerned, Jesus is concerned and is calling each and every one of us by name. Lazarus, come out. Come out from that situation. Come out from that challenge. Come. I'm re you are ready to be untied. You'll be loosed so that you can be free. Free to worship him, to worship, him, to worship me. Free to be close to me. Maybe our life is not right with God. Maybe our life, our relations, are not right with one another. God is calling us to come out from that situation, from that challenge, from that difficulty, so that we can be restored to a good relations, relations with one another, to good relations with God, to live a holy life because you don't know when will he come, when our life will end in this world. So, brothers and sisters, God cares. God loves us so much. And so, in this situation where I am in, with my people, I cannot see them a number of years I know that God is there, God is with them, and one day he will bring us peace. He will bring us together once again. And all of us, one time, one day, we will meet in that heavenly banquet where we can sit together, we can celebrate the joy that Jesus comes to bring as he brought uh, back the life of Lazarus. Let us pray. Yes, Father God, we want to thank you, we want to bless your name for challenging us to come close to you and to recheck our life, the way we live. We want to acknowledge our weakness, we just want to confess and ask you to come and lose us, give us new spirit, give us new flesh, and bring us, restore us in good relations with you so that we may live and work for you. I will bless you in Jesus' name. 
Amen.